Hello again, everyone. I'm John Kosar, Chief Market Strategist at Asbury Research. Thanks for viewing our latest Following the Money podcast. Today's date is Sunday, May 19th, 2024. Today I'll be talking about what Asbury Research's latest data-driven market research and quantitative models are saying about current financial market conditions. That is when to be on offense and looking for opportunity, and when to be playing defense and protecting your capital. After studying the financial markets for over 40 years, I have learned that, contrary to what a lot of financial, financial professionals may be saying, you can most definitely time the markets. There certainly are times when it's a lot more difficult to do so than others, but it can be done consistently with an unemotional, data-driven, and repeatable approach that simply follows the money rather than trying to forecast the future. Asbury Research has been providing both investment research services and money management to individual and professional investors since 2005. For more information about us, visit asburyresearch.com and use the contact tab, which is right here, or just click the link in the description of this video. Finally, if these YouTube videos are useful to you and you'd like to see more of them, please like and subscribe. Let's begin with a, f a few brief announcements. From now through the end of May, which is May 31st, we are offering 10% off on three and 12 month individual investor subscriptions for following the money followers, subscribers, and those who like our videos. You can use the contact tab here and give us your name and contact inf information and we will send you back more details. Uh, number two, thank you uh, to the Orange County and New York City chapters of the AAII, which is the American Association of Individual Investors. I did a presentation for them on Saturday morning, which was yesterday morning, and I just wanted to say thanks. It was fun uh, to see everybody and to get an opportunity to explain how Asbury Research approaches investing in the stock market. Last week on Wednesday, I did an interview with Oliver Rennick of the Schwab Network. That was May 15th, talking about Asbury Research's latest take on the markets. You can access that if you wish from the media tab, which is right here at asburyresearch.com. Finally, myself and my son Jack will be making a presentation at the Metastock Traders Conference this upcoming Thursday, May the 23rd, entitled How to Make Data-Driven Decisions in an Emotional Market. This conference is free of charge and sponsored by a number of firms and organizations, including the CMT Association, which I have been a member of for the past 30 years. You can sign up, and again, it's free of charge by visiting metastock.com. Now let's follow the money by identifying some key areas of our focus um, over the next upcoming several weeks or more. Let's begin with a broad overview of the current themes in the marketplace <clears throat> that I think are shaping the movement in the market and shaping a lot of the metrics that we look at to try to determine where the opportunities are. Uh, generally favorable economic data, most recently uh, last week's CPI and PPI data, all continue to keep the 2023 bull market chugging along. However, there is still a lot of jumpiness and indecision in the markets this year, and you can see that in sector rotation. Our CEF model follows sector rotation, and we're going to be looking at that in just a few moments. Meanwhile, many of the commodity markets continue to strengthen, particularly uh, in the metals and mining space, as price-based inflation continues, in our view, to be a growing factor in the, in the economy and how people look at markets. I'll talk about some of these markets uh, in a little bit more detail in just a few minutes. Next, let's move to Asbury Research's tactical models. The Asbury 6 is where we're going to begin here. So we're going into the Research Center and we're scrolling down to the Asbury 6. And there it is. Uh, in our most recent Follow the Money podcast that we did for you on May the 5th, which was exactly two weeks ago this morning, we said that in our Asbury 6, we said that our Asbury 6 model had just shifted back to positive or bullish as of the close on May the 3rd. Uh, the benchmark S&P 500 has risen by about 4% since then, and it continues to be positive. As you can see, all six of the metrics in the Asbury 6 are all in a positive status. They're all green, 
And if you look at the dates in all of the green cells, you can see most of them turn green in between May 2nd and May 6th. So what does that mean? It means the market's internals are strong and they are conducive to more strength. Previously, the A6 had been positive from November 2nd of last year to January 10th and captured a 20% rise in the S&P 500 in that particular signal. Uh, we created the Asbury 6 15 years ago, I think it was, to provide a data-driven daily indication of the true internal health of the stock market. Its purpose is to help keep us from making trading and investing mistakes due to all the day-to-day -day volatility that we see in the marketplace right now, which at times has forced all of us, including me, I've been doing this for 40 years, to make emotionally driven trading mistakes. You might have a really good buy idea, all your charts look good, you've done your research, and then we have one or two days where the S&P is down 40 one day and 30 the next. Before you know it, you're second guessing yourself, you're out of your position, and then three days later, the S&P is making fresh highs and you're forced to buy back in. The Asbury research is meant to keep us focusing on the internals and not chasing the tail of the S&P 500. More information about the Asbury 6 and all of our data-driven models is available by visiting asburyresearch.com, going back to it here, and if you click models at the top of the page, all of our models are listed and you could dig down deeper for more information about each of those. Next, let's talk about sector rotation. Sector rotation is of critical importance to me because it shows what parts of the market are outperforming the S&P 500 and which parts are underperforming. Our CIF model, CIF stands for sector ETF asset flows, by the way. It does this by following the money around the 11 sectors of the S&P 500, which together comprise the S&P 500 because the movement of this money around these sectors is what drives the prices of those individual sectors higher and also lower. This week, the top ranked sectors, according to the CIF model, are utilities, which is XLU, financials, XLF, and technology, which is XLK. The bottom ranked sectors are currently consumer discretionary, XLY, healthcare, XLV, and energy, XLE. So looking at those, you can see that there's directional indecision in the market right now. Utilities is our number one ranked sector. We're going to look at it a little closer in just a second. That's a defensive sector. Technology is our third best ranked. That's an offensive sector. Then if you go to the bottom, healthcare, second from the, um, second from the bottom, that's a defensive sector. Consumer discretionary, which is the weakest, is offensive. What does that mean? It means that even though a lot of the major indexes are making new all-time highs, the market isn't sure what to make of this. There are certain factions of the market that are using this to buy defensive sectors. Places like XLU or utilities, probably because they're unsure of what the sustainability of the current rally. The S&P 500 is up 30% since the end of October of last year. Um, so by buying utilities, you're still able to participate in the stock market, but you're doing so in a defensive way. So again, the bottom line here is first look at first blush, looking at the S&P 500, happy days are here again. But if you look at the money that's moving around the sectors, there's a lot of indecision. So I said that we take a look at one of those and we're gonna look at it right now. So these are our rainbow charts. You can see why we call them that. And these are all associated with the CIF model. So this is the one for utilities. And you can see that favored status up on top. This goes back a year, by the way. This is one year of the rankings of the utility sector XLU according to our CIF model. Favored status is green. Neutral status is yellow. Avoid status is red. Down in the bottom is the is the um, associated relative performance chart between XLU and SPY, which of course is the ETF for the S&P 500. So note that utilities first moved into favored status here on April 30th and has stayed there. It's actually getting stronger. Look what's happened since then. 
we've had relative outperformance of 4% in XLU versus SPY after all of this period of relative underperformance here. So this just shows you how the movement of money moving around these sectors has a very pronounced effect on what the direction of these sectors are, both outright and relative to the S&P 500. You can learn more about the SEAF model by visiting asburyresearch.com, clicking models at the top of the page, and then scrolling down to the SEAF model. Now let's look at global asset allocation according to our US versus the world model. So we're gonna go back here, go back to the research center, and we're gonna go down to our where to be invested, the CARP model and the US versus the world model. So here is our US versus the world model. <clears throat> and this basically measures the relative strength of the, U, uh, of the US S&P 500 or SPY versus 25 different foreign, foreign equity markets around the world in three different time frames, weekly, monthly, and quarterly to see where the trends are. Two of the model's favorite countries right now are Spain, which you can see right here, it's EWP. You can see we're outperforming in both the tactical and in the strategic and also United Kingdom, which is right here, which is outperforming SPY in all three of the time frames. Let's take a look at those charts. So we're gonna go back here. Here's EWP, this is Spain. So our model first indicated an opportunity to buy and or overweight Spain on April the 19th. You can see since April the 19th, EWP has gone 8% higher um, highest that it's been since the latter part of last year. And in the meantime, down here, it's outperformed the S&P by 1%. <clears throat> Let's take a look at United Kingdom next. The UK, since, uh, again, since our model indicated a buy slash overweight opportunity on April the 19th, which is right here, you can see EWU has gone 10% higher. Again, as high as it's been since the latter part of last year, and it has outperformed the S&P by 3%. Finally, let's take a look at commodity prices. Commodity prices have been really interesting um, to me since the beginning of the year. Uh, subscribers to our Following the Money podcast may remember that we had been bullish on the silver miners, which is SLVP, between March the 28th and April 16th. That ETF rose by 13% during that just few week period while outperforming the S&P 500 by 17% in between those two dates. Uh, Asbury's data-driven screening process for many ETFs, including the commodity ones, is driven by four things, by trend, by relative performance, by investor asset flows, and also by the risk reward of that particular idea. It's now indicating a new buy overweight opportunity in the metals and mining space as we currently have relatively new long ideas, um, those ideas show up here, back to the research center, those ideas show up here in our se sector and industry group ideas. But what I wanted to show you today is one of those that we're looking at is the gold miners. So we have been long the gold miners um, for a relatively short time, ring, is one of two different ETFs that track the gold miners. But this is the big picture that I wanted to show you. Even though our smaller, um, more uh, tactical indicators like asset flows and relative performance are giving us signals now, the bigger picture is showing us that RING is bumping against a pretty important major resistance level. It's this major trend line, downtrend line from the August 2020 high and also the May 2023 horizontal resistance level from the highs of last year. Both of those come in right around 2817. We are edging up above that area now. After this long period of kind of a, a coiling that we've seen since 2020, this could be the makings of a really important breakout. So we're already on top of that. And there's some other uh, trades in the metals and mining space that we also show um, in our sector and industry group ideas. So that wraps up another Asbury Researchers Following the Money podcast for this week. 
Our next Follow the Money podcast is tentatively scheduled for Sunday, June 2nd. If you like our approach to investing, don't forget uh, that our 3 and 12 month subscriptions for individual investors only are available for 10% off through May 31st. Again, use the contact tab, tell us you're interested, and we will send you the details. If you're more interested in money management, you could also request more information about us by also using the contact tab.